It can be hard to distinguish between phonetics and phonology, as they are two strongly related fields in linguistics, and they do have some similarities to each other, but they do talk about different things in linguistics. So it makes sense to ask the question, what exactly is the difference between them, and what do they do differently, and how do they work together? This video won't be in-depth about phonetics or phonology, it will just talk about the differences and try to make it understandable, but I might do in-depth videos about phonetics and phonology in the future, and if they exist, you will find the links in the description or up here in the corner. I want to start with a quote by Kenneth Pike, who said, Phonetics gathers the raw material, phonemics, which is just phonology, cooks it. What does this mean? Let's start with phonetics. So phonetics gathers the raw material. What is the raw material? Raw material, for example, would be speech sounds, but it could also be suprasegmental information. So you can kind of think of this as the material. Now, phonology cooks it. So it does something with this material that we collect in phonetics. One of the things phonology, for example, does is it uses this material to discover patterns. Another thing it does is it formulates rules. So phonology can discover patterns or formulate rules, but also investigate principles governing the sound systems of particular languages. So phonetics is providing a sound inventory for all human speech sounds and phonology is then trying to discuss the function, so patterns and rules, of these sounds in particular languages, for example English, German, French and so on. So what does this mean practically? For example, phonetics can just say that there exists the sound of a glottal stop and it can describe it, how it's articulated, how it's perceived, how it's made. And we can say that it exists both in English and Arabic. Now, the phonologist can say that the glottal stop has a different function both in English and in Arabic, and it appears differently in the sound patterns of these languages. In English, for example, at the beginning of a word, it's just a way of beginning vowels, and it never appears with consonants. In Arabic, the glottal stop is used like any other consonant, so it can be compared to K, T, and so on. It's used normally as a consonant in the words. The phonologist would find this difference between English and Arabic. Another thing that could be said is that phonetically, t, s, c all exist in both English and German. This is just the phonetic description. In German, though, the c is listed as one segment. In English, it can be listed as both c or as the combination of t and s. To explain this, I will take the English word salts, so salt in the plural, and the German word salz, which means the same thing but in singular. Now, both words include the same final sound, z, both in salts and salz. The z acts as a z. Now, why is that? That in English we can say z or t z, whereas in German we can say just z. It's one segment. Structural analysis reveals that native speakers of English identify two consonant sounds at the end of salts, whereas in German they only identify one consonant sound. This could have to do with orthography, because in English it's written with two consonants, so it might have two sounds, whereas in German it's just one consonant which has this sound. Another reason why TS might be considered as TS in English is morpheme boundaries. If you don't know what a morpheme is, click up here or down in the description, there's a link to a video of me talking about morphemes. So, what do I mean? Salt is the base form of the word, it's just salt. By adding the morpheme S, the plural marker, we say, okay, this word is in the plural. So here we have a morpheme boundary between first morpheme, second morpheme. In German, this word is one morpheme. This crossing of morpheme boundaries in English, where c usually occurs, might be the reason why we identify two separate sounds, t, s, instead of just one, c. So both orthography and morpheme boundaries could be the reason why in German it's one sound or one segment, whereas in English it's considered as either one segment or two segments. So to summarize, in phonetics, we describe speech sounds, like for example, fa. Phoneticians ask the questions, how long is the sound, what is the frequency of the sound, and another question might be what the shape of the tongue is during the articulation of this sound. So in phonetics we might ask these questions and other questions and with this describe all the sounds made by humans. In phonology then, we would simply ask how are these sounds used and what are the patterns and rules in particular languages. So phonetics gathers the raw material, for example sounds, and phonology cooks it, so it finds patterns and rules. And if you want to learn more about what sounds are, what phones and phonemes are, click the video on the screen right now, it's in the middle. And if you're still here now, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And see you next time. Goodbye.